From mining to industrial waste, from farming to paint, chemicals are used in virtually every sector of the modern economy, and their waste affects everyone from Tokyo to Argentina. That's why the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development of 1992, a recommendation was made to establish cooperation in the field of chemical safety. Three years later, the IOMC was established. The IOMC is the inter-organization program for the, the sound management of chemicals. It is a uh, coordination mechanism as well as a cooperation mechanism between the intergovernmental organizations that have a program on, on chemical safety. With chemicals being such a broad topic, it requires a large network of specialized organizations. With FAO, ILO, UNDP, UNEP, UNIDO, UNITAR, WHO, the World Bank, and the OECD, the IOMC is equipped to deal with activities ranging from agriculture to human health to safety training. The Minamata Convention is a new legally binding instrument adopted by consensus by all uh, different parties of this INC process. So the ministers of uh, environment of the world agreed that mercury was an issue of global concern and that required global action. Well, Minamata Convention controls the supply, trade, use, emissions, releases and disposal of as the negotiations were concluding on the Minamata Convention, we could see that it would be beneficial for the organizations to collaborate together to deliver the support that countries require for the actions that they need to take under the convention. And thus, the IOMC Mercury Group was formed. And these organizations helped nations like Sierra Leone and Mongolia ratify the Minamata Convention. Working with international organizations like UNIDO and the UNDP in the mining sector of Mongolia, particularly in chemicals management, is uh, very much helpful for the country. Establishment and the strengthening of uh, chemicals management, which is very new in the country. We're currently working in Angola on a project with UNIDO. Mercury, as ever, is a very significant health problem. So we've been working with colleagues from WHO. We work with them to get greater access to some of the health information that is out there and to make sure there is as much support as possible for Ministry of Health stakeholders we'd like to have involved in the project and others. We are jointly implementing a project with our friends from UNEP, still on artisanal and small-scale gold mining in two countries, in Mongolia and the Philippines. Basically, UNIDO is focusing mostly on technologies, while UNEP uh, is focusing on accessing to finance and on the, the policy aspect. So I think this is really using the best that UNEP and UNIDO can offer to, to work together. But the IOMC Mercury Group goes beyond specific policies in specific countries. As Laurent explains, We don't work in isolation, right? So for us, it's very important and helpful in our work to coordinate what we're doing with our sister UN organization. There was a huge exchange of uh, communication. We would exchange information on our activities and which countries we would work on. This was like a place where we coordinated with each other. And I think it helped us to build these relationships that led to the development and, and to um, this very successful project that's being implemented right now. One um, activity that uh, was recently held in the IOMC Mercury Group that was quite interesting to, to me um, was a technical session on artisanal and small-scale gold mining that was uh, attended by, by almost all of the IOMC um, organizations. And for me, this really showed the, the, the breadth of expertise that we have um, among, in the organizations on this, on this one issue. And any sustainable solutions to the global mercury problem will require innovation but they'll also require collaboration between the agencies to ensure that the unique expertise is leveraged in any of the actions. And this is where the IOMC plays a critical role in the global coordination of policies, whether at the international level or the national level. And so that's why what the IOMC Mercury Group has been effectively working together to support countries, because alone we can't do it. We need to bring the, the strengths of the different organizations to give the countries the support across all the many different aspects that they need to address when they're implementing the Minamata Convention. There are 
more than estimates are 1.3 billion people that are engaged in agricultural activities worldwide. And we know that a majority of them use pesticides. Pesticides are unique agricultural inputs in that by nature, pesticides are poisons that we intentionally disperse into the environment with the objective of killing biological organisms. Scientific studies and surveys have shown repeatedly that a lot of people are poisoned by pesticides. Pesticides are a major issue of concern and deserve special attention. And because of that widespread potential for exposure, the number of people who can be harmed by them is huge. It could be farmers, it could be their families, it could be their children. So how can pesticides, a harmful but necessary chemical, be regulated? Like Mozambique, for example, which in 2014, with funding from SICAM and working closely with FAO, managed to deregister 31 products, 31 pesticide active ingredients, translating to 61 pesticide products, thereby reducing risk to human health and the environment. And having deregistered these pesticides, they phased in and they are still in the process of phasing in safer alternatives. Well, the IOMC definitely promotes um, the collaboration between different UN agencies, which is absolutely fundamental when it comes to pesticide exposure, because um, we know that pesticide exposures do occur um, in many different settings. So that could be consumers, it could be at the workplace. Um, it also has a big detrimental impact on the environment. And so it's essential that uh, we don't work in our silo areas, but we communicate and we share information. In, co in collaboration with other stakeholders, including the UN agencies, is translated, for example, in increased awareness of pesticide risks and the need, need to invest in sound life cycle management of pesticides, capacity building for pesticide regulators, and strengthening the institutional and regulatory frameworks for pesticide management. And by working together, the FAO, WHO and ILO with OECD and UNEP and with all relevant stakeholders, deal with an issue that affects billions of people. Food is one of the major commodities which is traded between countries and it very often has residues of pesticides within that food. And if you had every country in the world had its own standards and they were all different, it would be almost impossible to sell food between one country and another. During the second international conference on chemicals management in 2009, lead paint was identified as an emerging policy issue under SICAM. UNEP and the World Health Organization were invited to act as co-secretariat of a new global partnership to promote phasing out the use of lead in paints within their respective mandates. And so the Lead Paint Alliance was born. Well, lead in paint contributes to a persistent poisoning problem and impacts on the environment. The Institute of Health metrics that showed, for example, that 63% of the global burden of developmental intellectual disability can be attributed to, to lead exposure. We're putting a lot of emphasis on advocating to policymakers to eliminate all remaining sources of lead exposure. Unfortunately, about 60% of countries still allow lead paint. So lead paint is available on the shelves of stores and people can use it to paint their homes. They can paint furniture, playgrounds. They can be used in universities and hospitals. So it can cause exposure of the public, especially children. And we know that especially children in lower and middle income countries are vulnerable and disproportionately affected because they're especially vulnerable to the effects of lead poisoning. UNEP and WHO work hand in hand on lead paint in their capacities as co-secretariat of the Global Alliance to Eliminate Lead Paint. The Alliance aims to prevent exposure to lead by promoting the phase out of paints containing lead and to minimize occupational exposure to lead paint. And especially as economies are growing and more buildings are being built and more buildings are being painted, it's really important to make sure that the lead that's used, the lead the paint that's used is not lead. So that's why the Global Alliance is really focusing on the primary goal, which is to assist countries in developing laws to eliminate lead paint. 
Mitcho and and UNEP are obviously equally committed to to addressing this problem and both organisations have considerable strengths which when we're working together we can harness them in much more effectively. So whether that be work at the country level whereby we we can coordinate our efforts to make more impact at country level, whether it's sharing sort of policy briefs collectively, joining our voices together to make a louder impact and also we can draw in a lot more partners collectively to the issue. The thing about Let's Paint is that we can make a difference. This is something that we can solve in the foreseeable future. It's not like some of the other intractable issues we're faced with today. The solutions are available and achievable. The challenges posed by chemicals and hazardous waste are enduring and constantly evolving as developing countries intensify their economies and the entire world increases its reliance on chemicals. The ability to change and adapt is key to meeting these challenges. There's a growing urgency to assess and manage chemicals more comprehensively. This means that multilateralism and working together are more important than ever to understand and work to solve these global challenges. And this video has provided a snapshot of just a few of the areas that IOMC organizations contribute to. But there are many more, from supporting polysent release and transfer registers, to harmonizing classification and labeling of chemicals, to preventing and managing chemical accidents and emergencies, to supporting countries to integrate sound chemical management into national development plans. IOMC organizations are active on crucial current issues, such as plastic and plastic waste, nanotechnology and electronic waste. IOMC organizations also support countries to implement international agreements like the Basel, Rotterdam, Stockholm and Minamata Conventions. And they've played a vital role in the ongoing implementation of the strategic approach to international chemicals management and its conference. The online IOMC toolbox for decision-making in chemical management has been created to help countries address specific issues in chemical management. The toolbox identifies available IOMC resources that will help countries address national problems or objectives with a focus on providing simple, cost-effective solutions. The IOMC organization's different areas of expertise, which include health, environment, agriculture, labor, industry, waste management, finance and development, enable IOMC to respond efficiently to the different problems that arise from the use of chemicals worldwide. But we don't only work with each other, we collaborate and we interact with extensive networks of stakeholder organizations, national governments and agencies, and a range of convention secretariats, and other international and regional organizations active on this topic. And we strongly believe that a multi-sectoral approach is crucial to effectively meeting the challenges we have ahead. The mission of the IOMC will continue to be to effectively provide countries with scientific, technical and legislative knowledge and support, as well as standards, tools and financing, and to actively contribute to the successful transition to the sound management of chemicals and waste for sustainable development. We invite you to visit our website to learn more.